Hi guys, uh, so this is uh, the 2nd of December. I'm just gonna have to record this again because I recorded, or I thought I recorded the whole thing and then realized that uh, I hadn't actually pressed record like I thought I had. Um, so, uh, excuse me if I sound a little bit uh, <laughs> tired. Okay, so 2nd of December, here we go. Here's the picture. I know of a shortcut, and that's the path we're taking now. Joachim woke up before Mama and Papa the next morning too, but then he nearly always did. He sat up and looked at the advent calendar. Only now did he notice a little lamb lying at the feet of one of the shepherds. Wasn't that strange? He had spent a long time looking at the picture with all the angels and the wise men, the shepherds and their sheep, but he had never noticed the lamb. Perhaps it was because he had read about the lamb on the piece of paper that had fallen out of the calendar. But that lamb had jumped out of a modern shop, and the lamb on the advent calendar had lived in Bethlehem long ago. There were no cars or traffic lights then, and no big stores with escalators and cash registers. Besides, Elizabeth had heard the church clock striking three, and surely there were no church clocks 2,000 years ago. Joachim knew that that was when the baby Jesus was born. Now he found the door with the number two on it and opened it carefully. A folded piece of paper fell out of the calendar as the door slowly opened. He peeped in at a picture of a wood where an angel stood with his arm round a little girl. Joachim bent down and picked up the scrap of paper that had fallen into the bed. He unfolded it and saw that something was written on it in tiny letters on both sides of the page. And he began to read. Ephirial. Elizabeth Hansen didn't know how far nor how long she had run after the lamb, but when she set off through the town it had been snowing heavily. Now it had not only stopped snowing, there was no snow on the path either. Among the trees she could see blue anemones, coltsfoot and windflowers, and that was unusual because it was very nearly Christmas. She picked up an anemone and looked at the blue petals carefully. Picking flowers at this time of year was every bit as mysterious as throwing snowballs at midsummer. It occurred to Elizabeth that perhaps she had run so far that she had reached a country where it was summer all the year round. If not, she must have run for so long that spring and the warm weather had arrived already. In that case, she might still be in Norway, but then what would have happened to Christmas? While she stood wondering, she heard the tinkle of a bell in the distance. Elizabeth started running again and soon caught sight of the lamb. It had found a small grassy bank and was grazing on it greedily. The little creature had probably been very hungry. It had not had any grass to eat so long as it had been winter. It had certainly not had a morsel of food to eat as long as it had been a toy either, and that might have been for a very long time. Elizabeth crept up towards the lamb, but just as she was about to pounce on it in order to stroke it, it sprang away again. Lambkin! Lambkin! Elizabeth tried to keep up with it, but then she tripped over a pine root and fell flat on the ground. The worst of it was that she realised she was unlikely ever to catch up with the lamb. She had decided to follow it to the ends of the earth, but the earth was round after all, so they might go on running round the world forever, or at any rate until she grew up, and by then she might have lost interest in such things as lambs. When she looked up, she caught sight of a shining figure between the trees. Elizabeth looked wide-eyed, for it was neither an animal nor a human being. A pair of wings were sticking out of a robe as white as the lamb. Elizabeth had only just managed to get to know the world. She had learned what all the commonest animals were called, but she didn't know the difference between a tomtit and a yellow hammer, nor between a camel and a dromedary, come to think of it. All the same, there was no mistaking what she was looking at now. Elizabeth realised at once that the shining figure must be an angel. She had seen angels in books and pictures, but it was the first time she had seen one in real life. Fear not, said the angel in a gentle voice. Elizabeth raised herself halfway up. You needn't think I'm afraid of you, she replied a little sulkily because she had fallen and hurt herself. The angel came closer. It looked as if he were hovering just above the ground. It reminded Elizabeth of her cousin Anna who could dance on the tip of her toes. The angel knelt down and stroked her gently on the nape of her neck with the tip of one of his wings. I said, fear not, just to be on the safe side, he said. We don't appear to humans very often, so it's best to be careful when we do. Usually people are frightened when they're visited by an angel. Suddenly, Elizabeth began to cry, not because she was afraid of angels, and not because she had hurt herself either. She didn't understand why she was crying until she heard herself sob. I wanted to stroke the lamb. 
The angel nodded gracefully. I'm sure God wouldn't have created the lambs with such soft fleece unless he hoped someone would want to stroke it. The lamb runs much faster than I do, sobbed Elizabeth again, and it has twice as many legs too. Isn't that unfair? I can't see why a little lambkin should be in such a hurry. The angel helped her to her feet and said confidently, it's going to Bethlehem. Elizabeth had stopped crying. To Bethlehem? Yes, to Bethlehem, to Bethlehem, for that's where Jesus was born. Elizabeth was very surprised at what the angel had said. In an attempt to hide her astonishment, she began to brush soil and grass off her trousers. There were some nasty stains on her red jacket too. Then I want to go to Bethlehem, she said. The angel was dancing on the tips of his toes again on the path. That suits me, he said, hovering above the ground. I'm going there too, so we might just as well keep each other company, all three of us. Elizabeth had learned that she should never go anywhere with people she didn't know. That certainly applied to angels as well. So she looked up at the angel and asked, what's your name? Elizabeth had thought the angel was a man, but she wasn't quite sure. Now he curtsied like a ballet dancer and said, my name is Ephiriel. That sounds like a butterfly. Did you really say Ephiriel? Just Ephiriel, yes. Angels have no mother or father, so we have no family name either. Elib Elizabeth sniffed for the last time. Then she said, I don't think we have time to talk anymore if we're going all the way to Bethlehem. Isn't it a long way? Yes, indeed, it's very far and a very long time ago. But I know of a shortcut and that's the path we're taking now. And with that, they began to run. First the lamb, then Elizabeth. The angel of Furiel danced behind them. As they ran, Elizabeth felt sorry she hadn't asked the angel why it had suddenly begun sum become summer. But when she caught a glimpse of the lamb on the path in front of her, she didn't dare stop. Lambkin! Lambkin! Joachim hurried to hide the piece of paper and the secret box for which only he had the key. It was John the flower seller who had left the old calendar with the bookseller. Did he know about the scraps of paper too? Or was Joachim the only person in the whole world who knew the secret? After all, he was the only person who had opened the calendar. But another thought struck him. Elizabeth, he thought. Wasn't Elizabeth the name of the lady whose picture John had put in the shop window? Yes, it was. He was quite certain. Could it be the same Elizabeth he was reading about in the magic advent calendar? She was an only child, it's true. But the calendar was so old, she must have had plenty of time to grow up during all the years that had passed since then. Mama and Papa came in that day too, to see the picture in the calendar. An angel, whispered Mama solemnly. He's comforting Elizabeth, explained Joachim. You see, she was running so fast after the lamb that she fell and hurt herself. Mara, Mama and Papa smiled at each other. They probably thought Joachim was good at inventing stories. They didn't know that he wasn't inventing anything at all. That day he had to get to school early, so there was no time for any more talk about the advent calendar. But Joachim thought about nothing else on his way to school. So much snow had fallen during the past few days that it was heavy going across the big sports field. He thought how Elizabeth had been floundering in snow when she began running after the lamb, but then it was suddenly summer. Surely that was impossible. When he came home from school, he had to let himself in. He got home a bit earlier than Mama nearly every day. Joachim rushed to his room and looked up at the magic advent calendar. It was still hanging there all right. During the day, he had wondered whether it had only been a dream, for Joachim was always dreaming about the strangest things. Now he was longing to know what the picture under number three was. Should he open the third door now? All he had to do was stick it back again afterwards and pretend he hadn't done it. But that would be cheating. To cheat over Christmas would be even worse than cheating at cards. It was like peeping into parcels that were not to be opened until Christmas Eve. It was almost like stealing from yourself. Mama soon came home from work and started to peel potatoes and carrots. Then Papa arrived, complaining how he had lost his driving license. I can't understand it, he said. Not in the car, not at the office, and not in my coat pocket either. You're a real muddlehead, said Joachim. Papa always said that to him when he couldn't find his pencil case or tidied his toys away. That evening must have been the first time in his whole life that Joachim asked to go to bed early. You don't feel ill, do you, darling? asked Mama. No, of course not, but I'm looking forward so much to opening the magic advent calendar that I can't wait. End of chapter two. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.